Welcome to the HPI Small Block Getting Started video. This video will show you more about HPI cars with the Nitro Star G3.0 engine. You will see how to prepare your engine for the first run and how to tune it for optimum performance. We'll show you an MT2 RTR in this video, but the steps are the same for all HPI small block powered cars. We recommend that you have a look at the general getting started video for all HPI cars in this DVD first, because there will be a lot of tips and tricks for your model as well. It is also still essential to read the detailed instruction manual included in the box. First, check the air filter. Never run your car without the air filter. This is sure to damage the engine and void your warranty. Make sure that it sits properly in its mounting position and that the foam elements are in place and there are no gaps. Air filter maintenance is important and this is covered in detail later in this video. So let's fill up the tank. See the general getting started video for how to handle nitro fuel. Always follow the safety guidelines. To get the best performance, easy starting and long engine life, always use high quality nitro glow fuel designed for RC cars. We recommend a nitro content of between 16% and 25%. Higher nitro content will give you a little bit more power, but adds more cost. It's a good idea to stick to the same nitro content fuel and even the same brand of fuel. If you change nitro content or brand, you will almost always need to retune the engine. HPI recommends different fuel brands in different European countries. The fuel can we've used here is for illustration purposes only. Now fill up the tank completely for the static break-in. We are first going to break in the engine. This process is essential to get the best power, performance, and life from your engine. Also, not following this process correctly could void your warranty. For the first start of your engine, open the throttle manually by turning the throttle servo about one quarter of the way. Never open the throttle more than half the way. To start the break-in process, the carburetor needles have to be at the base settings. If you have changed the settings or have problems starting the engine, then return to the base settings shown later in this video. Starting your engine with the pull start system is very easy. To prime the engine with fuel, cover the exhaust pipe and without attaching the glow plug igniter, turn the engine with the pull start until you see the fuel in the fuel tube reaching the carburetor. Never pull the pull starter cord more than 30 centimeters, as this can damage the pull start. The engine is now ready to be started. Use a box or stand to elevate the vehicle so that the wheels can spin freely without contacting the ground. Attach the charged glow plug igniter and start the engine with quick short strokes as shown. If the motor doesn't start within a few seconds, check the troubleshooting section we will show you right after this chapter. When the engine is running, remove the glow plug igniter and manually adjust the throttle until the engine reaches a steady idle. The engine will not sound too clean during break-in, as it is tight and running quite rich in fuel. Due to the rich fuel setting, you should see oil spitting out of the exhaust pipe. Take your time during the break-in process. Let the engine run at idle until the tank is empty. Breaking in the engine is very important to get the best power, performance, and lifetime from your engine. If the engine does not start easily, or you have changed the needle settings, you should return the needle valves to their base settings. The HPI NitroStar G3.0 engine has a two-needle carburetor with a high-speed and a low-speed needle. The high-speed needle is at its base setting 
when the top of the needle is flush with the needle body. If the high-speed needle on your carburetor is not at this setting, then you should adjust it for the run-in period. You can check this by looking and feeling the head of the high-speed needle with your finger. In most cases, the high-end needle is the only one that needs adjustment. So if you have problems, always try resetting this high-end needle to the base setting first. The setting for the low-speed needle is similar to that of the high-speed needle. The head of the low-speed needle needs to be set so that it is flush with the carburetor body. Again, check the position of the low-speed needle by looking and feeling with your finger. If the engine fails to start, the most common problem is that either the glow plug is broken or the glow plug igniter is flat. The way to check for both is to remove the glow plug and test it in the igniter. The filament in the plug should glow red hot, so please be careful as the filament itself is hot enough to burn. If the glow plug does not become red hot, you need to charge the igniter or test it with the new plug. If the new plug glows, that indicates the igniter has sufficient power and the original plug is broken and therefore needs replacing. Always use HPI glow plugs to ensure the correct match with the engine. There are several grades of glow plugs, so be sure to use the correct one. After checking, replace the plug as shown, making sure the sealing washer is in the correct place. If too much fuel gets into the engine, it becomes flooded. In this case, the engine will lock up. You will find it very hard to pull the pull start. If this happens, you should not continue to pull the pull start as this could cause damage to the pull start mechanism. To remove the excess fuel that has caused the engine to flood, you need to first remove the glow plug. Cover the engine head with a thick cloth and pull the recoil starter several times. This will remove the excess fuel from the cylinder. Be careful to cover the engine head to avoid fuel splashing. We recommend testing the glow plug before refitting, as a flooded engine can damage the glow plug filament. After checking, replace the plug as shown, making sure the sealing washer is in the correct place. Now it's time to run your model for the first time. But remember that the first and second run are still part of the break-in process. Details on batteries and radio setup are covered in the general getting started section on this DVD. Please follow advice given in this section before your first run. It is very important to always turn on the transmitter before you turn on the car. Always remember, transmitter on first, off last. Check the brakes are working properly. Center the throttle using the trim on the transmitter. The car should move totally freely with the throttle at neutral position. Push the trigger forward to apply brakes. Make sure at full brakes they are strong enough to stop the car. You can adjust the brakes with the thumb screw at the end of the throttle linkage rod. Fill up the fuel tank, prime and start the engine. Then increase the throttle very slowly until you reach full speed, then release. This will clean the excess oil out of the engine. If you want to stop the engine, pull a rag over the exhaust outlet for a few seconds. Now start the engine again.
Place the car on the ground. It should not move when idling. If it does, adjust the trim on the transmitter so the car doesn't move. Also, center the steering using the trim setting on the transmitter. The car should run straight without touching the steering wheel. Drive the model slowly and carefully in a wide circle. Stay in the low to mid-range speeds. Never use full throttle during the first run. Use a bit of throttle, then coast and let the engine cool. Give a little more throttle and then coast again. Continue doing this until the tank is empty. Let the engine cool down and repeat this for one more tank. After two tanks at half throttle, the standard break-in procedure is finished and your engine is ready to use. But we still recommend you take it easy on the engine for a few more tanks. Accelerate slowly to full throttle for a few seconds, only for a second or two, no more at this stage. Then coast and accelerate again. Repeat this until the tank is empty. After the engine break-in, you can start tuning it to achieve optimum performance. Make sure that you have completed each step of the break-in process. Start with the needle valve base settings as shown earlier, or continue from the settings used to break in the engine. Fill the fuel tank and start the engine as normal. First, run up and down the road a few times to warm the engine up. We will adjust the high-speed needle first. Turn the high-speed needle valve one-eighth of a turn clockwise. The fuel mixture will become leaner. This means it contains less fuel and more air. You will notice that this improves performance and the top speed of the car. It should rev more and produce a little less smoke from the exhaust. Turn the needle valve another one eighth of a turn clockwise. Performance will become even better. Always turn the needle valve one eighth of a turn at a time to maintain control over the adjustment. Repeat this process as long as there is an improvement in the engine's performance. If you have turned the needle valve too far, throttle response will not improve anymore and the engine might even stall when accelerating. At this point, do not lean the mixture anymore or you could damage the engine. In this case, turn the needle valve one eighth of a turn counterclockwise to add a little more fuel. This will richen the mixture a little to give optimum performance, correct lubrication, stable running, and a long life. When properly adjusted, the engine should run smoothly at top speed. The exhaust should always emit some blue smoke at full throttle. If there is no blue smoke, the engine is set too lean and can easily be damaged. On the contrary, if the engine is set too rich, there is no danger of damage, but the engine's performance will suffer. The low speed needle controls the fuel-air mixture during acceleration. In most cases, the engine will run fine with the low speed needle at base settings. We recommend not to adjust the low speed needle. However, if you want to fine tune the low speed needle, the principle is the same. Turn the low speed needle one eighth of a turn clockwise. This will make the fuel mixture at low speed become leaner. Accelerate to about 75% throttle and observe the performance. You can lean out the low speed needle in steps of one eighth of a turn as long as there is an improvement in the engine's acceleration. If you have turned the needle valve too far, the engine speed will start to rise at idle or the engine may shut off when accelerating. 
At this point, do not lean the mixture anymore or you could damage the engine. Turn the needle valve one eighth of a turn counterclockwise to add a little more fuel. This will richen the mixture a little and give optimum performance during acceleration. The ideal low speed needle setting will have a quick smooth acceleration and visible exhaust blue smoke. If there is no blue smoke, the engine is set too lean and could easily be damaged. On the contrary, if the engine is set too rich, there's no danger of damage, but the engine's performance during acceleration will suffer. Remember to check the adjustment from time to time as the air to fuel ratio can change with different ambient conditions. If you have problems, return to the base settings as shown earlier in the video and tune the engine again. We will now show you what correct and incorrect engine settings look and sound like. This should help you get the best from your engine, avoid problems, and maximize engine life. When both needles are adjusted properly, your G3.0 engine will have a quick, smooth acceleration and run smoothly at top speed. The exhaust should always emit some blue smoke. Having the low speed needle set too rich is the least critical situation for the G3.0 engine. The car will accelerate sluggishly and you will see a lot of smoke. If the low speed needle is set too lean, the engine revs will start to rise at idle and it will struggle while accelerating as it is starved of fuel. Do not run the car with this setting as it could damage the engine. If the high speed needle is set too rich, the engine will feel sluggish and the top speed won't be very good. There will be a lot of smoke at full throttle. If the high speed needle is set too lean, there will be little smoke at full throttle. The engine will struggle to run and it might even shut off at full throttle. This is the most dangerous situation for an engine, as there is not enough fuel to lubricate the engine and it will overheat quickly. Never run the engine too lean. Adjust it right away as it can damage the piston and sleeve. And here is how it should look again. Quick, smooth acceleration, an impressive top speed, and always some blue smoke. After tuning the engine, you might have to adjust the idle screw. Warm the engine up for a short while.
To adjust the idle screw, apply the brakes with the transmitter and turn the idle screw with the flat blade screwdriver. Turning the idle screw clockwise will make the revs go up. And turning it counterclockwise will make them go down. You can hear the revs changing while turning the screw. At idle, the engine should run stable at low constant revs. A typical situation for a too low idle screw setting is when the engine cuts off when applying the brakes. The HPI Nitro 3 Touring Car family is equipped with the two-speed gearbox, which you can tune to the engine or the terrain for optimum performance. A two-speed gearbox will give you quick acceleration and an impressive top speed. We will show you how to adjust the gearbox without the gearbox cover for better illustration. You can make the adjustments without removing the cover, but always stop your engine before adjusting the two-speed gearbox. First, you have to turn the wheels until you can see the first hole in the outer gear. Then, hold the clutch and the right rear wheel with one hand. Be careful because the clutch might be hot. Turn the left rear wheel until you can see the set screw through the hole in the outer gear. There are two screws in the inner gear. Make sure that you find the correct set screw. It is the right screw facing the car forwards. You will need to use a 2mm hex wrench to make adjustments to when the second gear engages. If the gearbox shifts too early, you have to turn the set screw clockwise to make the gearbox shift later. The adjustment is quite sensitive, so make your adjustments in 90 degree increments. If the gearbox shifts too late, or not at all, you have to adjust the gearbox for an earlier gear shift. Turning the set screw counterclockwise will make the gearbox shift earlier. Again, make your adjustments in 90 degree increments until you get optimal performance. A properly working air filter is very important to the performance and the life of your engine. Dust and dirt which get inside the engine can cause serious damage and even destroy the engine. Therefore, regular maintenance of the air filter is very important. Check the air filter after every run. First, unscrew the end cap of the filter assembly and remove the two elements of the air filter. Now rinse it with nitro motor cleaner, applying the cleaner to the clean side of the filter. Rinse until all dirt has been removed. Always follow the manufacturer's guidelines for handling the motor cleaner. After the filter has dried, you have to apply air filter oil to the inner element of the air filter. We recommend that you use HPI air filter oil. Make sure that the inner air filter element is completely covered with oil. Now replace the filter elements. Make sure that they are properly fitted, leaving no gaps at the rim. If there are gaps, dirt could get into the engine and cause serious damage. Now your HPI G 3.0 powered car is ready for action. Start carefully to get a feeling for the handling of the car and its amazing performance. You will soon see how your driving skills improve and you'll quickly be ready for some serious stunts. Thank you.